Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Ben and Alonzo here, uh, episode th uh, seven of season three of Masters of Sex, uh, Monkey Business. If you're smart, you won't get involved with Mrs. Johnson. I know for a fact he's sleeping with her. I like Bill, believe it or not. I'm not sure I like him for you. Bill and I are not involved in any way. I don't say this a lot, but this was not a very good episode. <laughs> if, if people are going to uh, say, you know, I was listening to, to the Howard Stern show as I do every morning, um. and uh, John Hine is the, you know, as the host of the, uh, uh, the show after Howard Stern show, the wrap up show, and he invented the website Jump the Shark. That's his. Thing. Oh, really? That was oh, his claim. Wow. That's where. That's where he has. He's living on Jump the Shark money. All right. If there's a moment that people care to talk about this show, Jump the Shark, <laughs> it might have been bearing your breast. To an eight. To, yeah, you know, and I mean, I, 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 jumping the shark sort of implies that you've passed the point of no return, and I, I, I give right. this. I, got you. I think this show will correct itself, but boy, yeah, this episode, all the subplots kind of felt perfunctory. They all sort of felt like this was kind of a placeholder episode, getting us from one sort of interesting thing to another interesting thing. But things are sort of getting set up, but it all kind of felt, you know, uh, Tessa at this point uh, is just. You know, it was it was interesting watching her sort of stir the pot, but it's sort of all she does anymore. That's right, and not even all that well, because you got to figure at some point, you know, she would know that that you know Josh Charles would discover that she was Ginny's daughter. You it, know, it was a it was that was a very weak old traditional TV plot point of the guy doesn't know that somebody yeah. is related to someone else, and is you know, I mean, and it seemed obvious. You'd be like. You know, he knows she has a daughter, and she knows all these things. And then when she walks out, it's just disgusting, really. I mean, would, uh, would, you wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't think. You know, it, it just it was really. And then Bill's dumb scene, I thought, with Josh Charles when he comes in with the negotiating whether they're going to go out. At oh night. yeah, yeah, and that just that scene goes on and on, on and, and it's, again, it felt like a like they all. Yes, it's the subtext. They all know what the other person's trying to do, but it's so it's it's such obvious subtext yeah. that it, and it that it ceases to be interesting. And then, and then, meanwhile, you know, meanwhile, back at lesbian, uh, you know, we have the, the 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 our couple trying to have a baby. I want a baby so bad. Don't you want a baby? They don't even have photos of the donors in here. As AV Club pointed out, it's like pretty much every conversation that they ever have on this show is Sarah Silverman saying, "Oh, I wish you know we could do X, Y, Z," and uh, Betty responding with, "Well, that's just not how the world works." Right, you know, right, and that's right. kind of all they get to do. And that was my favorite part of it. I suppose, <laughs> except I don't think that that like as as sort of as much spunk. Uh, and zest and and thumbing your nose to authority as Betty has, except when it comes time to say that's not how the world works. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think you I don't think you you do the insemination yourself. I really I don't think the secretary <laughs> tries to inseminate. Like I think I mean I get it. She needs to keep working on Bill to get it done. Right. But you can't just come in and you know and then Hank the. You know, she's a do-it-yourselfer. Yeah. You know, she probably made a, probably built a deck on the back of their house too. And just you know. everything, like she, <laughs> Hank was the the janitor. Even seeing Hank, even that felt weird. Like it just nothing seemed. It didn't seem like it was this show. Yeah, no. I mean, all the ape stuff, kind of. I, I don't know. I mean, like that whole that weird Alex Borstein scene. You know, where it's clear that she's had some relationship with the gorilla that was. Oh right, yeah, totally. totally beyond right, the right, point right, of good taste, right, or whatever. Right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it just this was just one where I kind of felt like mm, y'all missed the flow this week. Yeah. And I love this show, and I I have full confidence that this is an anomaly. But yeah, I just kind of you know. Oh, and 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 I did kind of like the the Libby. Next door neighbor sure, scene a, that, that was you know they're having that they're having a believable real moment sure I mean his stress that line he has where the only thing I've looked forward to for you know months is you walking in that door I cannot begin to apologize for what I did these past few months all I have wanted to see come through that door is you what do you want from me the whole thing about their illusions and stuff that was and, you know, and even the kid uh, but even I mean half and half the kid burning the football card but with no payoff. Right, with no pay. I guess we'll get. It. I'm sure we'll get the payoff yeah, later. Yeah, at some um, point. But even that felt a little too. You know, it's like you know, it's very specific. You know, I don't remember which player was a good player. Ernie, Johnny, Ernie, Never, Ernie Nevers. You know, yeah, so long, Ernie Nevers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just you'd think he'd be like, like it would be more emotional for the kid rather than just spiteful. Like, like you would think, like a kid doing that would be, like would feel alive 
and terrified and sad. Right, yeah, it, exactly. It's, it, it, it's, it's thrilling, but also ter scary if you get caught. And, and, like and, it's sad. and upsetting, it, right, upsetting. The, 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 you have to do it at all. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. But none of that, but it just seemed like, you know, like the, the villain on a Gilligan's Island <laughs> episode. You know, it just didn't, it didn't seem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, the, but Libby and the husband, I, that, that was, because we're totally setting that up, and that's, yeah. And that's a believable I, I, I assume we're going to kind of a last tango in Paris place where that apartment is going to become their little totally. island of, you know, right, right. Get away from Affairsville, the you know. Yeah, and just a respite from his terrible situation at home and her terrible yeah. situation at home, although apparently, uh, whatever, the kid's apparently just, he's raising himself. Right, and well, of course, then the question is, if, if, if neighbor guy is going to go bang Libby in the apartment, who's at home with the wife? Because uh, they don't have, like, a nurse or anything, do they? Have again, we seen any again, home care again, professionals? Sort of, we have to presume that she's not sitting alone, drooling in a room upstairs. Choking on something. Yeah, so, the, uh, yeah, it, it was, this was, this was, this was, uh, this was flawed. And then, and then even, and Lester and Jane, too, like, I, oh, I, yeah. I did not believe that. I did not believe that. That that yeah, the Jane's friend you know, Keith, right? Keith, the the sexually dysfunctional. His dialogue all felt very kind of yeah, from seeing Bill down there and the, the irony of the jumper cables and yeah, that that and and then the, the the whole thing of like, well, if we can help the ape, we can help this guy. It it just it all even for a show that that this season has been very much as we've talked about, kind of offering these sort of parallel story tracks and and usually with some degree of skill and you know efficacy. This one just kind of felt ka -chunk, yeah, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, like just yes. does these things fall anvils falling out of the sky, you know. And 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 that we were just like they be, yeah. This was about single people need help too. Yeah, and, and that a new slice can excite any man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, or that that sometimes you have to like you know kind of bend the rules of propriety to help out the people who need it. You know, so yeah. and, and another and, thing, right? I mean, but even then, but, which this show has said before in, in a more interesting way. So even like. Libby is not Libby. Uh, uh, G Virginia yep. is so excited about she, you know. No, we can think of the the play we'll get if we help the gorilla. Yeah. And they do help the gorilla, and then she's instantly like, no, we can't mention this because we can't tell the. You don't have to tell the whole truth. You just say you helped him. You don't have to say when they say how. You like make something up. Yeah. I don't know, or you know. you, you, you know, uh, uh, ape doctor privilege. You know. <laughs> or say it's interesting. I think merely my presence as a woman there helped him. Mm -hmm. You can say that. Yeah. That's okay. Just, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Euphemism your way out of it. Right. Yeah. And then which then but then you wouldn't get that whole weird scene with the Newsweek guy where he's like we helped an ape, the ape whatever the right. the fake football player right. is like oh. Right. Mm. Yeah. And then right and that look he gives her and then even the Newsweek reporter. Well, Dr. Masters, how would you characterize? It's just, uh, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird. It was like yeah. a different show for, yeah. for 60 years. Yeah. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe they let the intern write this one. I don't know. but uh, Maybe Tessie wrote it. <laughs> Fingers crossed for next week.